everyone to the spaghetti feast. Ada. Hey, Adeline, over here. Hey, Victor, what's up? What are you doing right now? Um, taking these plates to the kitchen. Oh, how boring. How about instead I show you something fascinating? Here, sit down. Okay. Now what? Now relax and have some of this delicious spaghetti. What? But I have work to do. Oh, you mean those plates? Yeah, that's already taken care of. Wait, where did they go? Nah, someone else took care of it. Who? Well, someone, Ada. You see, I noticed something a few months back. I can come to any church event I want, and someone else will take care of all the work. What? Well, think about it, Ada. I haven't helped with any of the last five church events. Not the potluck? Or the game night? Or even the bake sale? Nope, nope, and nope. And you know what happened? Nothing. I just enjoyed myself, and everything was still taken care of. Really? Oh, yes. I think this is how we were meant to experience church. Well, I have been working really hard. Exactly. You should relax and enjoy it. Just give it a try. Welcome, everyone, to the fish fry. Yay, fish, fish fry! fry! Welcome, everyone, to the bake sale. Yay, Yay bake, bake sale! sale! Welcome, everyone, to the Christmas pageant. Yay, Yay Christmas, Christmas pageant! pageant! Welcome, everyone, to another bake sale. <laughs> Yay, Yay, bake, bake sale. sale! Huh? what's wrong, Adeline? You don't seem to be enjoying your bake sale cookies. I'm kind of not, Victor. It just seems weird that I haven't helped with anything at church in... Uh, oh... Four months. Four months? It's been four months? Eh, time flies when you're letting everyone else do the work. But doesn't it seem wrong not to help? It's not against the rules. There's nothing that says we have to do volunteer work for the church. That was their big mistake right there. Yeah, but it's our church. It certainly is. If it's ours, then we should help it. It's our chance to come together and do something for the community. I'm gonna go see if they need help in the kitchen. If this is supposed to make me feel guilty, let me tell you, it will not work. You're totally free to help or not, Victor. This just works for me. Oh, okay, good. Because because even if it is just a little boring sitting here, you, you can't make me help. I wouldn't dream of it, Victor. Okay, good, right, that's right. I don't, I don't have to help with anything, unless I want to. Oh, Montgomery. Nothing like a mid-morning snack on Christ the King Sunday. Let's see what you have, and I'll let you know if we should trade or something. Thanks, Victor. I'm always willing to share. I hope you like mayonnaise on toast. Oh, Drat. It seems the straw to this juice box has been lost. I'll be right back. Have no fear, citizen. Phantasmo, defender of integrity and hygiene, is here to save you. Uh, save me, Otto? Save me from what? From having to go back inside the church to get a straw. <laughs> My name is not Otto, it's Phantasmo. Though this Otto you speak of sounds really cool. Oh, hamburger meat. I've spilled my crunchy snacks. <gasps> wow. And I've saved you as well, citizen. Saved you from an afternoon without chips. This is all very nice of you, uh, Fantastico, but you didn't really save us. You're just being helpful. <laughs> no need to thank me, citizen. There are other people who need my saving. Who was that masked vending machine? Was that Otto flying off with a grappling hook launcher? It was indeed, Clarabelle. He's patrolling around the church as a superhero, saving people. Who knows what kind of daring do he's up to as we speak. Far beneath me, my town stretches. While it sleeps, I will protect it. Of course, it's 10 a.m. right now. So my town is probably awake. <gasps> oh no! Oh no! Dad! Garrett! <laughs> mm. Oh no, Fiona! Oh 
don't know. That's not a situation that needs saving either. What's this? <gasps> Sounds! A medium-sized rock! A mere ten feet away! One of them could possibly trip over that rock! Somebody has to save them! Huh? Oh, my belt! It's caught on the church! Okay, Otto, this is fine. Uh, you just have to reach back and unhook it before... <laughs> ah! My grappling hook launcher! Okay, Otto, just think. Uh, there has to be a way out of this. Just stay cool. I did not know Otto could fly. He most certainly cannot. Then, oh no. Well, it looks like Otto's gonna have to hang out until Whoa. he can get some help to... Uh, help! Help! Oh, what do we do? What do we do? Hold on, Otto! Oh, no! Otto, are you all right? I am thanks to you, Clara. You saved me! What is this? It's my inflatable raft from home. I brought it in case of flash floods. They can strike in seconds, you know. Triangular crayons are amazing. They're stronger than regular crayons, and they don't roll away. May I use the brown triangular crayon? I need to color in the mountain of the Lord's house. No can do, Ada. I called dibs on the triangular crayons. Monty is my witness. I don't call dibs. Why do you need the whole set the whole time? That's just how calling things works. You call them, and then you own them for nine minutes. And that was six minutes ago, so I got these babies for three more minutes. Well, what if I call double dibs on the triangular crayons right now? Double dibs overrides dibs. But beware, for a dibs war could begin. Well, then I call triple dibs. Well, then I call quadruple dibs. Well, then I call five upple dibs. Stop it. Stop it. When will it end? See, Otto? Now you scared Clara. You scared her. And five upple isn't a word. <gasps> it is so a word. Just give me the triangular crayons, Otto. I'd rather dump the crayons on the old radiator than let you use a single one. But that radiator is the hottest thing in the world. The crayons would be doomed. Give me the triangular crayons, Otto. Why don't you come over here and take them? <gasps> How dare you call my bluff? Give those back! Stop it, Otto. <laughs> oh, no! You're being mean! You're being mean! I'm being perfect! No! No! I didn't mean it! I didn't mean it! What have we done? The triangle crayons aren't triangles anymore! Now they're pancakes. Is it over? Maybe. Oh, look at what our fighting has led to. And in the house of the Lord, no less. The last place we should be fighting. Well, Pastor Donna says that people fight everywhere, even in church. Wait, so she said it's okay to fight? I think it was more like God knows people are going to fight, but God is always working to bring peace. Well, we're already at peace, now that the triangular crayons are gone. I guess I'll just have to use the square crayons. Oh no! Not again! <laughs> Dibs! Ada, wait! We can't keep doing this. You're right, Otto. We can't keep doing this. I'm sorry, Ada. I probably take Dibs too seriously. I'm sorry, too. Is the dibs war over? It is. You can come out, Clara. I'm good. <laughs> Whoa! 
Welcome to the Advent Ambassadors Program. You're all here because you're interested in welcoming potential new members into our church. Dang! With the Advent season here, our pews will be filled with people who may only come to church around Christmas. As Advent Ambassadors, it's your job to welcome them and... Please stop making those noises, Victor. Oh, but this is torture! Victor, if you didn't want to be an Advent Ambassador, you shouldn't have signed up. I didn't sign up. But you keep running into my great aunt Marjorie and telling her about all these great opportunities that I'm missing. It is a great opportunity. It's a waste of time. You don't want new people in the church? Why would I? What's the appeal of new people? Mm hmm. Maybe some role playing will help. I'm sorry, did you say role playing? Victor, why don't you play the role of the new member? And Ada, you can welcome Victor. Uh, no, 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 no. For this scene, my name will be Toledo Jack. All right. Ada, please welcome Toledo Jack into our church. Hi there, Jack. Please call me Toledo. Oh, hi, Toledo. My name's Ada, and I want to welcome Hello. you. Hello. I'm Toledo Jack. I just moved here from Pineapple City. Pineapple City. Wow, that's a pretty far move. It is. And on top of that, I... I don't know anyone here. It's so difficult to make friends in a new place. How's a person like me, Toledo Jack, supposed to break the ice? Well, coming to First Second Church at Christmas was a good first step. I feel so lonely. So alone. It makes me wonder if the move was even worth it. Uh, may maybe this place isn't right for Toledo Jack. Should I move back to Pineapple City? I just want to be welcomed. Why won't anyone welcome me? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Try again. You too, Jax. <laughs> so <alone. laughs> We're welcoming you right now, Toledo. You are? Yeah. We can all go to church together. I feel... I feel so wonderful. I, I feel so included. Now I, Toledo Jack, the man who has never lost his daring contest, I want to help the wonderful community. That is First Second Church in any way that I can! Think of all that we can do working together! Oh, thank you! Thank you so much! Thank you! <laughs> and scene! Well, Victor, do you see the point of the Advent Ambassador Program now? I get the general idea. All right, let's keep on training! Excellent! For this next scene, I will be... Copperhead. Anthony Copperhead. Secret Agent. Uh, Jax, could you please pass the glitter? I really want this Christmas ornament to catch the eye. I think these might be the nicest ornaments we've ever made for Christmas. Last year's were, Stop! uh... Stop! Stop making decorations! Ada? <gasps> You're standing on the table! This is more important than Sunday school horseplay rules! We've been doing Advent all wrong! <gasps> <gasps> Please, just come down from the table. There's so many potential consequences. There's no time, Clara! This is serious! We're not just doing Advent wrong this year. We've done it wrong every year! Every year! How is that possible? Is there something more we're supposed to do for Christmas? That's just it, Jax. It's not about Christmas. It's not about Christmas at all! Pastor Pete's monthly musing and meditations. The church newsletter? Yes! Look at what Pastor Pete wrote. Things to consider this Advent as we wait for the Messiah. The Messiah? Yes! It turns out that's what Advent is really about. We're supposed to be waiting for the Messiah. What's a Messiah? <sighs> I don't know. Is it a person's name or a job title? And why does it have the word mess in it? What else did the newsletter say? Oh, I, um, uh, didn't really get much past the headline. Oh, it says there's a prophecy about the Messiah. Yeah, they'll be the person to deliver Israel.
Gabriel. And they'll heal the sick, comfort the poor, and even raise the dead. Oh, no. I don't think we're prepared for the Messiah at all. Okay. Oh, we need to stay calm. Impossible. Let's start making some Messiah decorations. We'll need construction paper, crayons, and all our Christmas decorations have to go. <clears throat> it's Jesus. What? Jesus is the Messiah. I skipped to the end of the article. See? It does make sense that it's Jesus. He did all of those things. He did. Jesus is the Messiah. So, what do we do then? You could get down from the table for starters. Oh, yes, please. <sighs> all is right with the world. Oh, uh, well... Uh, oh, almost. Oh, hold on, I'll just uh, pick pick up this uh, mess here. Good morning, Ottoman. Hello, Adelaide. And Monterey. How are we this fine Sunday? Those are not our names, Victor. Whatever do you mean, Adelphia? Adelaide, Adelphia. Neither one of those are my name. My name is Ada. Well, of course. Those are just loving nicknames that I've given you all for the purposes of friendship. Well, enough. It's confusing. Ottoman, do you feel the same way? Yeah, if you could just call me Otto, that'd be great. You all feel this way? Even you, Monterey Jack? Who is he talking to? From now on, Victor, one name per person. Their real name. But life is too big for just one name for everything. Even Emmanuel had more than one name. Uh, who is this? Emmanuel is Jesus, of course. Victor, you can't just give Jesus a nickname. That's too far. I didn't give it to him. Joseph named him Emmanuel. Really? Joseph named him Emmanuel? Emmanuel. It's all right here in Matthew 1. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> An angel visited Joseph and gave him specific instructions for naming Mary's baby. The angel said, she shall bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus, which means God saves. Matthew then explains that this would fulfill the words of God's prophet Isaiah, who said this child would also be called Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Huh, that certainly is a good name for Jesus. Precisely. And I tried to pick names that were good fits for all of you, like Ottoman here. I named him after the great Ottoman Empire. Bold, brave, powerful. That changes everything. Okay, but why do you sometimes call me Adelaide and sometimes Adelphia? Well, Adelaide in Old German means noble-natured, which is perfect for you. You're the noblest person in Sunday school. And Adelphia is a type of flower, which naturally refers to your beauty and elegance. Oh, I had no idea. And Monty, I call you Monterey Jack after Monterey Jack Cheese. You're mild, you're great at parties, and you're my favorite. Hooray! Monterey is here! Hooray! I'm the best! Go, Monterey Jack! See? There's a story behind every name. Well, if it's because you think I'm elegant. Yeah, and you could call me Ottoman anytime. I like being cheese. You don't ever have to stop giving out nicknames, Victor. Thank you, Automobile. Wait, why do you... Because you're fast, like an automobile. Yeah! Now you're talking. Vroom, vroom! The nativity scene is going to be extra special. Thanks to my beautiful layout design. Right there, Otto! No, a little to the left. 
Here? Too far. Jesus is the Messiah, Otto. He brings good news and great joy to all people. He has to be perfectly center. Here? Split the difference. Perfect. <laughs> great work, everyone! I'll go tell Pastor Donna we finished in record time! Ah, uh, Monty. Mrs. Claus wasn't in Luke's account of the Christmas story. True, true. But it wouldn't be Christmas without Mrs. Claus. Well, it was. For hundreds and hundreds of years, did anybody see where Monty found that Mrs. Claus statue? No, it just kind of appeared. But while I have your attention, do you care where I put the off-brand cola penguins? I mean, it wouldn't be Christmas without the off-brand cola penguins. Yes, it would. I'll put them by Jesus. No, do not put those penguins by Jesus! Ada, do you have a preference for where to put the tiny percussionist youth and magically alive snow person character? I'd prefer they be left out entirely. Ada, it wouldn't be Christmas without the tiny percussionist youth and magically alive snow person character. Oh, don't worry, Ada. I brought my limited edition holiday My Size Chromobots. They're from Japan. There were no Japanese robots at Jesus' birth. That's true, but the Chromobots can time travel. Make way for Mr. Holiday Ball. Make way for Incredible Tony. Make way for Tiny Tim and the entire cast of Christmas Carol. I... what? What is happening? Ada, where should I plug in the white and sound system? Sound system? Oh, there's an outlet. Christmas. All the stuff we put into the nativity seed, it's all gone. There you all are. Come on, you're going to miss Christmas service. But we ruined the nativity scene. We can't celebrate Christmas without it. Of course we can. Lights and decorations are fun, but you don't need them to celebrate Christmas. Now let's go. So what do you need to celebrate Christmas? I don't know. All I know is that we're going to have a lot of cleanup come spring. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. This is coming along nicely. Perfect. <clears throat> yep, this picture sure is done. Miss Jane is going to be super impressed. <laughs> when she asked us to draw one of the great escapes of the Bible, I'd say I delivered. Possibly over-delivered. Yep, it's absolutely... All right, Otto. Let's see it. Well, <laughs> if you insist. Huh? What is it? It's Jesus' family escaping from King Herod to go live in Egypt, obviously. Why are they building a mine? They're not! They're tunneling to safety with pickaxes. Even baby Jesus? Especially baby Jesus. He was probably great at digging and wanted to help his family escape. A tunnel might very well be how they got away. Oh, it's pretty good, Otto. But I think mine is even better. It's a desert? It's Moses and the Hebrews escaping from Egypt. It looks like a desert. Well, it is. But that's just because you can't see the Hebrews. They're camouflaged to blend in with the background. If you want to plan a great escape, it's best not to even be seen. And where are the Egyptians who were hunting for them? They went home since the Hebrews were so expertly camouflaged. That and God parted the Red Sea. Well, yes, but everyone draws the Red Sea scene. I wanted to show how they escaped as far as the Red Sea. It's a long ways. What about you, Jax? What did you pick for a great escape? Um. Mine is a, a little different. That's all right. Miss Jane always says, there are no wrong assignments, just assignments that are two weeks late, Otto, and can you please turn it in on time in the future? Homework for Sunday school has been a little intense lately. The fact that we have homework for Sunday school is intense. As I was saying, my escape story isn't from the Bible. Whoa. 
what's that? It's my family and I, last summer, escaping from a hurricane. It's what I thought of when Miss Jane asked us to draw a great escape. You escaped a hurricane? Yeah. We were staying at my Aunt Trudy's house while she was out of town. We got a warning on the radio that gave us enough time to drive to safety before the hurricane got to shore. Weren't you scared? Yeah, it was scary, and we didn't know if we were going to make it to safety. It must be so hard for anyone to go through something like that. It was, but God helped us escape. So it was kind of like the Hebrews escaped from Egypt and Jesus escaped to Egypt. I thought you said a radio warned you and you drove away. We did. But my parents said God was with us that day. Though, I think God might have been driving separately because I looked all around the car and didn't see anyone but me and my parents. I'll bet God's car is awesome. Definitely. Definitely.